I chose to do cuff pins because it was the immediate need I found there. And so we hit the ground running looking at our considerations such as age of family of the cuffs, location, drainage, sun and wind for drafts and sterile. We chose a site which was both near the mums for uh, milking and also which was near um, the people for security's sake. Um, so I then quickly drew out by hand um, a sketch using the materials they had, which were wooden pallets and poles. And I also just used the materials I had at that moment. So while I was doing that, we kind of then went into clearing and setting out to prepare for a foundation. We started by cutting the grass in that area. Um, we had no fencing, so we had to walk around the cows. We collected poles, which we were already using for fencing and the palace which were already there in storage, and that was my, my unit module size. We did a test pallet just to see what we're working with. Originally, we wanted to create some kind of module decking that we can then um, assemble together on site. So we used string and poles to set out, and like you see, it's the module of the pallet. We then dug and cleared out that place, and went on to dig holes for the poles. Um, watching uh, the workers dig the holes was quite interesting. Um, they were using some kind of sped uh, where they would dig and approximate a round hole and then use their hands to kind of scoop it out. It was something that was quite tedious and very uh, painful to the hands, but it was quite effective and fast, and so we were able to put up um, the poles in about two days we had already put that up but then we reached a problem of the poles were too high so we had to sit down and discuss over a cup of millet porridge and then we decided to step the flow but also to reduce the height a bit and so what was interesting was them first putting up the roof and the iron sheets before they do the flow something I'm not used to and so we used nails and string again to uh, step down to create the heights of uh, 200 centimeters off the floor which created this uh, stepped effect for our floor and then we cut off the extra edges which we then kept um, I took a break later on uh, to visit some farms around the area I went to a farm in a different district which is considered some a module farm because it produces about 3,000 liters of milk a day um, so this farm was quite amazing it had its own a milking parlor. Uh, it had its own chiller with which chilled milk is uh, more profitable. It used milking pumps to kind of get its target. It had its own shredder for feeding its animals. It also had feeding sheds for dry season and therefore it grew its own feed feeders and which was quite good and it also had its own water trough so animals do not have to walk down to the dam and it also had calf pins. Uh, these were for older calves, uh, but it also gave me some inspiration as to what I was doing. I then visited a smaller farm, which only thing it had was a cow crash. And then um, and then another farm which, which had a bigger cow crash, but not much. The last farm was a government farm, uh, which had a small calf pin and some feeding troughs. Um, it's about 31 square meters, so I wasn't able to go to the other parts of the farm. But this is what I observed as I was there. Another thing was a milk route that I took and saw different collection points. Then the next stage was really floor decking. In order to save up on material, which we were lacking, uh, we decided to leave our original plan and break down the pallets and collect the 4 by 2 inch, 4 by 2 inch supports, which were under there. And then dig the support and it was also quite an interesting thing to watch as they did they put the beams before they put the foundation poles and then after that cut them halfway and put them in the ground another a problem we faced though was the the distance i had put uh, left a bit of a wobble and so we resolved that by just adding an extra piece of timber uh, to kind of stabilize it. Two would have been better, but we were low on resources. Another thing we faced was termites. Uh, as we're walking, we realized that the termites were climbing up and starting to eat the wood. And so we advised to get old engine oil from like a uh, mechanics shop and paint the lower part that it would work. I then took a break as well to 
present my project to the staff of the farm and get their view on what I was doing and get some information on how I can prepare it better. We started talking about just the physical attributes of the site and why we cho why they put things where they put and how the site governed that and what information was available to them. Um, this discussion then led to more insight on the vision of the farm, where they're coming from, um, and also just talking about the standards that are available because right now the standards they're using are Kenyan standards, which is a neighboring country, and those funded by uh, other organizations to uh, the East African market. There's none that was specific to the Ugandan situation. This then went on about the limitations the workers face, the limitations the animals face. The next stage was um, in doing the petitions and the openings for the calf. Uh, we had to get more poles to do the roof on the other side. Um, because we ran out of four by two inch beams. But then we continued ahead and started uh, doing the decking. I started by doing a sample of the door just to see what exactly I wanted and have them in a frame. Uh, I used an existing bucket, a feeding bucket to kind of help me get the height. And then we built a box around where the buckets can sit in and the calves can feed from. We then did a test to see what height we wanted and then went ahead to start putting in uh, the frames and the partitions to create the individual uh, sections. What was quite interesting for me were the joints where uh, clean cut timber would meet this raw um, undefined poles and the joints we had, they had to create and also the way things were joined by nails was quite interesting to me and it was also quite stable. Um, and some were quite interesting, but they still served their purpose. And so we went ahead and did that door, which then helped us because now everyone knew what the door was to look like. So we all could work on a separate door for an individual uh, calf. We had quite an audience as we worked. Um, and then it went into putting our first door, which was quite interesting because I realized that all the doors, they only put one, two nails, uh, but that's how it is. Uh, putting up the first door was quite exciting. Uh, there had to be some trimming along the way, uh, which is common when you're working with wood. And this was our lock. Um, it's quite temporary, but it's something we could do quickly and start using the calf's pens immediately because it was a dire need. Our first patient... Um, had pneumonia and so that morning after we put the door they put our first patient which was a good tryout because then we could discuss what things are working what things are not and one of the things that was mentioned was there was a bit of a draft still coming in because we had separated the partitions to kind of save wood an amazing thing is how they named um, some of the calves after us uh, which we were quite happy about. So after finding out that about the usage, we made some alterations. For example, instead of putting that separate partition, we went ahead and put that, which actually saved us a bit of timber. And uh, that's how it ended up looking, which worked just fine for us. Uh, one of the workers got quite creative and created a three uh, usage part. Uh, thank you.